Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Dipti Shah and welcome to my show, Artistry. Today I have with me the very talented founder and director of Fly High group of companies, Ms. Karen Kaur. Hello, Karen, and welcome to my show. Hi, Dipti. Thank you so much for inviting me to your channel. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Karen. Karen, you have started not one, not two, but three companies. How did your business journey begin? I was working with the, some local companies and the local company has, uh, my job was to help out the, uh, you know, local and international clients to buy, you know, setting up their office, setting up their company and the corporate account and then help them, their staff to, you know, uh, move here in Hong Kong. I'm already doing a business development manager is to developing the company's business. Then why not? I can do that, you know, in my company with all my heart. So that's how I started the same business nature, which is a fly high business solution. So previously was a global trusted group. So I was already, uh, you know, that good in that uh, job. So I decided, okay, you know, I, I focus on my, my, my thing where I have, more freedom to do and add up more policies, which policies I cannot do it here. That was fantastic story, Karen. So once you started your own company, what was your first venture? What did you do? So I started with Global Trusted Group. So Global Trusted Group is help out the uh, local or international people, those who want to start their business so here in in Hong Kong so it's like company formation we do company formation we help out with the oh you know corporate bank account opening and we help out with the accounting and auditing but along with that they have uh, you know after they set up the office then we help out with the immigration services so uh, but global trusted group name changed to fly high business solution uh, last December Karen would you advise a freelancer you know, someone who's working on her own or his own to open up a company? And if yes, why so? For the freelancer, okay, uh, actually, uh, so many inquiries that I receive from the uh, local clients that uh, so many of the, you know, ladies, what they do, they start to supply the food, you know, some tiffin system uh, here in Hong Kong. And after that, the people, those who are paying the rents, and also the staff, for example, if it's a restaurant or it's a bakery, they complain to the IRD department and IRD department has, uh, you know, come to their home and some people got caught and some people, uh, you know, saved or warning, you can say that because he, uh, for the starting up a company, uh, you know, initially, even as a freelancer, it's uh, at a certain point is, is fine, but if someone who has already invested their money in paying the rents and all, then from that sense, they can complain about you. Once you start to get a fame, for example, then so many people know you and maybe your competitor or someone who know you, who doesn't want to see you growing can complain about you. And then you will be in big trouble because they even trace your Facebook, your everything, like how you generate the income, and you have to report to IRD, uh, you know, about your, you are making the income and not. So that, that will put you in a, uh, you know, a big trouble and nobody want to be, you know, get into the trouble. So that is why I highly suggest initially is okay. But once you start to reach at a certain point and nobody want to see you, then they will complain without you even knowing, without even the freelancer even knowing. Because so many cases I receive and eventually they opened a company just to show that, you know, they have- They're a legal uh, entity, right. So it's always safer, particularly in Hong Kong, to go ahead and open a company once you're a little bit established, rather than, yes. you know, taking the risk of, you know, actually getting uh, your business shut down. Yes, yes, yes. You cannot right. have the same name or something with the other. They can sue you even uh, you know 200k or even more uh, it happened in the past with some of my clients so that's my personal suggestion better to open it just you know you are safe as well Karen then you moved on to immigration as your second business which I understand is very very successful 
Hmm. But if someone applies for a visa with you, it is hundred percent guaranteed that they will have a visa done. How is this possible? <laughs> Actually, um, because it's you know it's all the experience working with lots of applications. You, you know you gain. Uh, experience with why the application got declined why why our uh, visa you know have the most successful rate it's all about working really hard on each application because when i take the application my job is to it makes me so happy when the visa is approved because it's it's kind of um you know happiness that i can see the face on their family like so I, if I take any application first, they have to, you know, I tell them honest answer why this application have this problem. You just fix this up before even giving me because otherwise no one will trust me. So that is, I, you can say that it's a year of experience working with lots of applications and um, working with the being rejected visa for the client to getting the approval. So it's all with the experience. So if someone comes to me, so they are going to buy my experience. Right. And that's how they can get the successful rate. Now talk about your latest venture, which is into travel and tourism. When the rest of the travel industry is kind of shut down in COVID for the past two years, here you are, you start a company. How does that happen and what made you convinced that, you know, this is a good thing to do? Actually, there is a saying that there is opportunity in every crisis. So in I opened during this Corona, the travel agency, which is Fly High Travel, uh, because it, there is a story also connected with it. Uh, one of my client challenged me. Uh, I helped him with the visa. So he asked me, I, he gave me the challenge to travel. Uh, you know, what is your biggest challenge? So I myself never travel much by myself, you know, alone, only few, few countries with even my family, not by myself. I have that kind of fear. If I travel alone, something wrong will happen or something which is, you know, that's built up while I was in India in my, you know, wrong beliefs uh, by my parents while I was in India. So he challenged me, you go to any other country by yourself. Even I choose the, uh, you know, uh, Chang Chia Chia, it's in Hunan. And I done everything from booking and everything by myself. So after my uh, one week trip, I came back and I told him that uh, one of my client, uh, he, the one who challenged me, I helped him with the visa. So he said, yes, I did it. And I have so much confidence in myself that, you know, but I have faced so much challenges, even being as a traveler. So then I decided that um, I want to open a travel agency, which can help the, uh, you know, local travelers if they are traveling to any other country with much information and with much more technology so that they can book everything by themselves, you know, in, in the online world. So even I travel by myself and one of my client told me, oh, Karen, even you, that was your comfort zone. I said, why? I told you to travel anywhere, but you're still in the comfort zone travel to China. <laughs> so uh, I, I can see a huge potential in the traveling because we are stuck in Hong Kong. We cannot go anywhere and everybody. So I think it's going to boom because I have done some research. So with that belief that it's, gonna picked up actually in between it's picked up and then that's how I opened the fly high travel. Karen building these three businesses sounds very exciting but I am sure that you have challenges on an everyday basis. So what are your top three challenges till the journey so far? The challenges uh because there are so many established company here in Hong Kong, those who are here like 20, 30 years. And being as a beginner, always uh, people starts to compare you. Then they said that uh, that's such an old company and uh, you are a new company. I think that uh, the number one challenge is like competing with the company, those who are so established and you are, a, you know, beginner coming here with no roots, with no financial 
uh, that one. Then you, what you do, you give, put on all your heart in whatever you are doing so that because eventually people gonna uh, remember you for the results. So for example, if you give me the, uh, you know, if you, I want to open a company, then from the beginning till the end, I am here with all my support with the best customer service. So I think if your customer service is so good, then it does not matter. It's a big company, small company. It does not matter because uh, that's what I realized while working, you know, so many years on my ventures. Number one is the uh, customer service. Uh, number one. Number two, challenges. Okay, so many challenges, for example, some people doesn't want to work with you because they said that they are working with some big firms already, but they still in how want to work with you. And some sometimes there are so many organizations and something that they doesn't want to give you some kind of licenses because they think that uh, they have a, you know, that's an old company. They, they want to go with them only. That I, uh, I have a mindset that if, uh, if this is not working, then I will do something that is working. So even if, you know, there are so many millions of people here in Hong Kong, like, you know, so why to focus on those specific customer who just concern about that one, then why not I concern about the other customer who care for you and who care for your results and for your job done. So my focus goes over there, uh, you know, that, that way, because it does not matter. It does not matter, uh, you know, it, either it's a big company or a small company. They also started with the one or two. If they are old, you know, they also started like us. Maybe after 20 years, people are going to say the same. Right. So that's the second challenges. And the third challenge, uh, you know, there are so many ups and downs and you don't know who you can share and then you look at the uh i mean it's always look shiny on the outside but you know you don't know what's behind the curtains so many ups and downs but uh i have some kind of uh blind belief and confidence in me which lead me through those challenges which uh even though there is a hurdle in front of me, but I have like, what I can do, what, okay, this is not working, what I can do that is working. Uh, so I always have this mindset, uh, you know, uh, somebody's not giving no problem. Some, I mean, maybe I can do something which is similar to that, right? So right. that's what I, I strongly believe. Right. There is yeah. always a way, there is yeah. always a way, you know. There's always a way. Absolutely. I mean, that attitude is the right attitude to live by. There's always a way. If not this, then something else. Right? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen, I see that you're a very, very uh, socially present brand and that you brand yourself first and then your company. What are your top tips, you know, for small business owners and otherwise for branding and for marketing themselves? For branding and marketing, I think the after the corona, what we can learn is how important is your online presence is. It does not matter. You need to have a big office, small office, how, uh, you, how you are dealing with your customers, how, um, what services you are providing that is different from them. That oh, there are lots of people in the same business. So what makes you stand out from others? So as of now for the marketing, I think the online, uh, the digital marketing, I highly recommend because I myself learned digital marketing during 2020. So number one is the digital marketing. And number two is, you know, because sometimes we would like to know who is the person behind the company, you know, who is the person who is running, what was the person who, who has this idea. So, you know, uh, so the person have also come out and to show, you know, to show who is the person because no one want to sometime work with XYZ company. We relate as a human being. Oh, this is the person. Oh, okay. You know, sometimes people look at my traveling photos and subconsciously they contact me. 
uh, for the you know travel agency or they know for the you know company formation or immigration for that sense so digital marketing and online online i must say is the most uh, you know representable part karen you're a keynote speaker and a very recognized industry leader in your sector how do you keep yourself updated with latest knowledge trends research as you said i think uh, the as a business owner you have to know your business other than any other person if you doesn't know you are not a good business owner you are not so for example if i if someone contacts me when, when i mean uh, uh, what is the benefits of opening a company or what how immigration works if you doesn't sound professional if you doesn't sounds like you have more knowledge so i think no one really uh, want i think they are not good so i keep myself updated even with the news or what's going on in the market not just limit to hong kong i mean how other big companies are uh, because it's all all companies they also you know do the surveys and that's how they get the feedback or what's going on so i keep myself updated about everything i mean as much as i can and try to grab those knowledge and share with others so that they can see okay oh she knows you know and not like a layman you have to be the knowledge of your business more than anybody else right. i mean that's what i believe thank you so much for those wonderful tips karen and thank you so much for coming on my show and sharing your time here Thank you so much Deepthi it was lovely uh, meeting you online and uh, thank you if you are doing such a wonderful job sometimes we doesn't know what others person are doing in their industry but while watching your youtube oh i said wow okay okay and then sometimes i feel like oh maybe this woman can help me maybe you know i can connect with that person and then if they are doing for example some cakes and i don't know from there to you know get it and i was like oh i should contact like that so you are doing like a kind of you know brand of awareing of what others persons are doing it's really uh, amazing and uh, really amazing about what you are doing thank you um, thank you so much for those kind words karen